Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we're gonna to be benchmarking this Dell Inspiron PC. Yes, I know it doesn't look like a Dell Inspiron, but that is exactly what's in this thing. We're gonna be benchmarking it finally today. Now, right off the bat, if you're interested in just how I got this Inspiron 3847 transplanted into the Deepcool Matrix 30 case, then go ahead and check out the last video and I'll sort of link that in a card or in the description down below. Either way it works. But basically, the Inspirons, at least from this particular generation, and this will be the ones featuring fourth gen Intel processors, uh, these ones actually don't have a lot of the sensors that the older generation Dell Optiplexes have that make it really difficult to get these things transplanted. Also, the front panel for the most part is pretty standard. There's two pin connectors for the power button, LEDs, as well as the USB and front audio are all just standard connectors. There's really just a little bit of soldering I had to do to short out some pins that have to be shorted along with the power button to get everything up and running. But once that was done, it was good to go and it was actually a fairly simple process. Now the CPU in this case is just an i5-4460 and while that's not a fantastic gaming chip here in 2020, it is still a competent one for the vast majority of all titles. And paired with the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte card, I suspect this is actually going to be a pretty solid pairing where neither the CPU or the GPU is a huge bottleneck on each other. So I'm guessing for the most part our games are going to come out and be fairly balanced with the CPU and GPU load, though I do get a sense that the GPU is still probably going to be the bottleneck in most games. And that 3 gigabyte VRAM buffer is making me a little bit nervous in 2020 here. I definitely like to see at least 4 gigabytes and really preferably I would like to see six or eight gigabytes on a GPU going into a 2020 gaming machine but for most titles three gigabytes is still going to be enough to at least get us up and running at decent frame rates and that's not really the only compromise that this PC has the RAM itself is only eight gigabytes of DDR3 again for a gaming PC I would really like to see 16 gigabytes or at least 12 gigabytes in most cases but this one is featuring eight gigabytes which will again get you by in 2020 it's just just definitely not sort of what I would recommend to somebody that's building a brand new gaming rig though just like pretty much any deal out there if the price is right it can still be a good value now you may be wondering why I decided to go with a GTX 1063 gigabyte card instead of something like an RX 480 or 584 gigabyte versions and the basic reason for that is the 1060 is a lower power uh, consuming card than the 480s or 580s and this power supply only has 300 watts on the 12 volt rail so I was kind of of working within the power budget and I was looking at it as I could either buy a new power supply and put in a really solid 480 or a 580 or I could put in a 1060 and know that I'm good to go on the power budget. Now also be clear because the i5-4460 is fairly low power I probably could have fit a 480 or 580 4 gigabyte card in this particular PC without really causing any sort of major issues. It's just that I wanted to make sure that everything was just plenty safe, even at complete full load on CPU and GPU here. And uh, in this case, tested as it is, both the GPU and CPU at full load, this power supply is more than enough for this system. With all that said, let's go ahead and hop into those gaming benchmarks and see how well this system performs. Now starting off with Fortnite at high settings, and I did start the benchmark a few seconds after I landed just so everything could load in and sort of stop stuttering a little bit because that's something I've definitely noticed with this title is when you first land on the ground, regardless of hardware, it seems like there's a fair little bit of stutter as the game just sort of loads in. Anyways, at high settings, I saw an average FPS of 102 in this title, a 1% low of 64, and a 0.1% low of 38. So this was a very good title at 1080p on this 3 gigabyte GTX 1060. Definitely gets a pass for this title. Next up in testing is Resident Evil 2 Remake, and I saw an average FPS here of 74, a 1% low of 49, which is a little bit lower than I was hoping for. However, there wasn't really any stuttering to speak of in the time I've spent with this game. So although it may be below that 60 mark I'm still happy with the gameplay here and a 0.1% low mark of 28 FPS altogether still a very solid and respectable performance for this title third up on our list is Metro Exodus once again at high settings 1080p though with this particular title I found turning tessellation off does give a significant boost in performance so we did in fact turn tessellation off here and I saw an average FPS of 79 a 1% low of 55 and a 0.1% low of 
47. So again, we didn't quite hit that magic 60 FPS number for the 1% low, but just like Resident Evil 2 Remake, I didn't really notice any kind of major stuttering to speak of in this particular title. So I definitely would still call this a very playable and acceptable game for the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte card. And last in our testing for this particular PC with this combination of an i5-4460 and a GTX 1063 gigabyte card, we have the Outer Worlds. Now I saw an average FPS of 77, a 1% low of 54, and a 0.1% low of 24. And just like I've seen with several of the other GPUs I've tested this game with, when you're sort of roaming around, especially when you first load into the game, there's a lot of stuttering, but it does seem to smooth itself out as you go along. And we actually saw a pretty solid 1% low here of 54, which while not hitting that 60 mark is a little bit better than I was actually expecting out of this card. Regardless, by looking at the percentage of CPU usage with the percentage of GPU usage, not just in this title, but in many of the titles we've looked at here, the GPU and CPU are both being heavily utilized, which is telling me that these are a fairly good pairing for each other. This 4460 Intel Haswell generation CPU along with the 3 gigabyte 1060, they're just working pretty well together. There's no major bottleneck one way or the other. Obviously, depending on what games you're actually playing, the bottleneck may shift back and forth between the CPU side of things over to the GPU side of things. But as a whole, the two seem to be a really solid pairing here. So let's talk about the conclusions that I have for this PC. First and foremost, these 1063 gigabyte cards run pretty hot if you're just getting the single fan version. So if at all possible, if you must go with a 1063 gigabyte card, then I would highly recommend getting one that has a two fan design because you're gonna get much better temperatures and thereby probably a little bit faster clock speeds out of these cards as well. Now to be clear, it's not like the heat in this card is just gonna kill it outright pretty quickly. In fact, it should have a nice long life even running at 82 or 83 degrees celsius under full load when it's gaming but it's definitely not ideal and getting either some better airflow than this case can provide with just the two case fans or just getting a better cooling solution on the gpu in the first place would definitely help keep those temperatures down keep those clock speeds up and thereby get you a little bit better performance and also keep your worry down for you know killing your gpu a little bit prematurely like i said i don't expect it to shorten the lifespan drastically but heat over the long run is how you kill components and this thing runs warm. Now the other major compromise is the eight gigabytes of RAM in this system. And again, I would recommend just going for 16 gigabytes or at least a 12 gigabyte kit. Now this is a little bit unfortunate with this particular system because it came with the eight gigabytes of RAM and the motherboard only has two DIMMs. So if you wanna upgrade to 16 gigabytes, you basically have to replace both the sticks already in this system. So obviously whoever's buying this PC is sort of signing up for that. That's gonna be very front and center and made very clear to whoever decides to buy it but it is an upgrade that for those of you building a new pc i would definitely recommend just jumping for 16 gigabytes or at least giving yourself a very clear upgrade path that doesn't require you to replace both the sticks of ram like this system will now keep in mind this is a sub 300 dollars pc so this thing is going to get you up and running on pretty much any esports title at well over 60 fps in fact a lot of them are going to probably run more like 100 fps or in that neighborhood on high settings at 1080p and it's actually going to get you either at or very near 60 fps and medium or high settings at 1080p on a lot of your AAA titles some of your more demanding ones you're going to have to hit down to that medium or even low settings but for the most part this is a pc at sub 300 that's going to get you up and running and it doesn't give you a great upgrade path for the components already in it but it does give you a basic shell for future upgrades and realistically upgrading to something like a ryzen platform is not overly expensive right now if that's the decision you want to make. Uh, DDR4 RAM is pretty much at an all-time low in price. B450 and B350 motherboards aren't crazy expensive. And Ryzen CPUs, especially first-generation ones, especially the Ryzen 1600, uh, the AF variant, uh, are just very cheap. So if you really wanted to upgrade this system in the near future, that's something that could be done at a relatively low cost. And you could still reuse things like the storage, power supply, and the case, case fans, all that sort of thing could be reused, including the GPU. But there are some more expensive upgrade costs for something like this than just getting yourself onto the Ryzen first gen or even second gen platforms from the get-go. So I do want to hear your thoughts on the matter. Let me know what you would change about this build, how you would sort of adjust things. Let me know all your thoughts in those comments 
down below. And of course, if you liked the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.